Hello everybody, welcome to Excel video 281. When we were talking yesterday about setting up a pivot table, we talked about setting up the data source and we have the data source part of our pivot table in this collections tab. That's one place to do a data source. The other is in connection properties. You can set up a connection to a data source outside of Excel and that's what I do for a bunch of my clients is I'll put a data source out there in SQL Server that has accounts receivable or build charges or collections or reimbursement or appointments or whatever it is and then connect Excel to that data source and then you can use this data source so that every time Excel opens it refreshes the data. It's a clever way to pull data from outside Excel and make it a lot more accessible as you set up a pivot table. What we're going to do today now that we have our data set up is I just want to add some rows and columns to the pivot table. I know I have seven and a half million dollars in collections here, but I'd like to know a little bit more about it. So if I wanted to know, let's say, who the physician was that rendered the service, all I've got to do is pick that field, which I've called doctor up here, drag it to row labels, and that fast, seven and a half million dollars is broken down by my four rendering physicians. And then if I wanted to see the location where the services were rendered, it's simply a matter of dragging the location field. Let's put this in the columns. And now I've got columns coming out this way with my different locations. I use uh, goofy names in lo of locations and physicians and those kind of things in uh, my Excel seminars that I do to keep people uh, awake and interested during uh, afternoons of Excel. But at any rate, here's all of the locations going out this way and the physicians. And if you say, well, you know, I really... I didn't realize I had that many locations. I wish they had the locations in the rows. It's a matter of dragging and dropping, and you can easily flip the rows and columns around. How long would it take you to do that in Excel? I mean, forever without a pivot table. But with a pivot table, it's just a matter of drag and drop, and you can move them around however you want. And that's what they call pivoting. See how I'm pivoting around? Some of the amount is staying constant, and I'm moving doctor and location around that. Watch what happens if I slow down a bit. Instead of putting them both one in row and one in column, let's do this. I'm going to put doctor, and notice how it's underneath location. Location's on top and then doctor. So I have my location, which are the Dickens novels, A Christmas Carol, Tale of Two Cities, David Copperfield, and on. And then I have my physicians underneath. If you want to see it the other way, you can put the physicians on top, and now I've got Dr. Rage, and here are all the locations. Again, how long would it take you to do that in Excel? It's a very handy way to move data around and focus just on what you want simply by dragging between the row and column labels. And when you're done uh, with a certain data field, let's say it's location, you can move it up to the report filter area. And from the report filter area, I've still got a drop down here where I can select, let's, uh, and we're going to go back and do a bunch of filtering where I could select, let's say, Oliver Twist. And now I'm looking at Oliver Twist for these docs and there in this location called Oliver Twist, here are the 1.1 million in collections. And it's just a matter of putting it up there when you're done, and when you're done filtering, you can always go back to all, and I can put it in the report filter area there, and if I wanted to see, oh, I don't know, the CPT code, I could easily do this and this, and there's the CPT codes with the doctors and how much they've collected by CPT code in the different columns. Very powerful way to move between rows and columns simply by dragging and dropping. And when you're done with the column, you can always either drag to the report filter area or if you're done all together, notice how my little cursor will change to an X and I can just move CPT code back into my list and it doesn't take up any space on my pivot table. That's what I wanted to show you today, moving rows and columns around, pivoting back and forth in a pivot table. Stay tuned next time. There's sorting, there's filtering, there's grouping, there's all kinds of things we can do with the pivot table. We'll start on some of those next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.